Hey guys, I'm Shail Morg from Codename One, and I want to show you a quick demo of uh, the upcoming uh, Codename One GUI builder that will be part of Codename One 3.2 as a technology preview. Keep in mind that this is pretty cutting edge at the moment, and it's buggy as hell. So this is sort of to show you the general direction of the tool and the way it will work. A lot of things are bound to change. This is why I'm not doing this as a how do I, but rather as a quick uh, video cast. Uh, but the basic concepts will probably stay as they are. That is the way the GUI works, the way the ID and the GUI builder communicate. To some degree will stay pretty much as is. But uh, a lot of things will uh, change. So one of the things that won't change is that we create uh, essentially a project which uh, will be effectively a standard uh, Codename One project and not a GUI Builder project. So if you'll notice, to create a new GUI Builder application, we use the manual coding, which really simplifies things if you want to mix and match GUI Builder and standard code, hand coding, and also for libraries, now you'll be able to use the new GUI builder within a library as well. So that, that's really, really helpful. So I'm just creating this uh, new project. And here we go. And this is the GUI test. And I've got the standard Hello World application here with nothing much. And to create a new GUI form, I'll, I'll just uh, right click, select Other. And I've got a GUI Builder form as an option here. So I can click Next. I can pick a form dialog or container. And here I can pick, a, say, Test Form. Click Finish. And this is literally uh, the skeleton form. Now, right now it's not connected to anything. Right now there's a default uh, High World form. So instead of that, I'll just do a new Test Form. Show. So if I run this, I want to show you something special. Notice that this section here is pretty significant because of these comments. Effectively, the GUI Builder generates this portion. So when I click play, you'll notice, see, it all jumped in a way. And that was our code generation process that literally generated that. And this is the test form that we have by default, which isn't really much, you know, just the title of the form and uh, its name. So, and the layout, obviously. So, in order to uh, actually drag and drop stuff into here, I can right click this, open the GUI Builder, and this is effectively the current GUI Builder as it is. I can just, here I can see the tree of the components, here I can see uh, the component properties when we'll have some. This is the layout settings and the possible layout. So I can pick, uh, for instance, uh, box layout Y, and it will be laid out as box layout Y. And uh, I can drag stuff from here. So I can put a label, and I can put a button, and I can put a text field, for instance. And I can obviously rearrange them any way I want, and I can change this to high world. And this should work rather nicely. And now you'll see that it's all part of the hierarchy, of the tree hierarchy. Now, one of the interesting things that we have here that differ a great deal is the way that we work with hierarchies. So one of the things I can do is I can drag a container over here. And instead of just, yeah, I can drag a button in there, which will should work uh, eventually. Uh, I'll be able to, yeah. So I can do that. and But one of the nice things that I can do is actually select the container. And this way I zoom in and I can edit the elements within the container. Uh, so this button, and that can be useful indeed. And then when I get back, it's uh, like this. So now this is a preview of the way the form should look. Uh, that I can also open. You'll notice that modified is also marked here because I need to save 
in order for the changes to be applied. Now when I save, you'll notice that nothing really changed here. Only if I rerun the project will the code be generated again. And you'll notice now that variables were added for every one of the elements. And they're all added based on the name that I gave them. So now if I go to the actual running application, this is how it looks. And that's pretty nice. Now, to bind an event, I can just click here, select the properties I've got, advanced properties for additional properties and events. So I can click action event and go back to the ID and you'll notice I have an action event here. So, and a bug, as, as I mentioned before. So in the action event, I can uh, essentially write uh, the code that um, performs the action. So I'll do something like dialog.show hi and hi world. Okay. Now, to make this even more interesting, I can also access things like uh, all the variables, which start with the GUI prefix. So I can do something like this, get text. So that should work. I also need to import the dialog class. And now if I run it again, the functionality is now also generated. You'll notice that internally we generate a callback. So this works. And you'll notice that the callback class is generated with the event source and it invokes that. And this is all part of the generated code that's effectively folded but it also generates all of that, including uh, the binding and for action events, data change events, and pretty much everything that you need is all generated into here. Now, how does this code generation work is supposed to be technically seamless. But one of the nice things about the new GUI builder is that it isn't completely seamless, but rather based on uh, XML. And to make things even more compatible, we've based it on... Uh, the new uh, the new XML uh, the, the existing XML format from uh, the existing uh, GUI builder. So we'll be able to migrate applications from the existing GUI builder to the new one. And it's under the res GUI builder directory in your project. And as you can see, this is literally the project uh, settings, including layout settings and everything related to that. It's all there and uh, including the names of everything and etc and whether an event is bound or not so this indicates that we need to generate uh, event binding code now this is literally generated from the build xml so if you look at the generate GUI sources and that's why when we run everything it suddenly works we have the init target within the build xml and within that init we literally scan that directory and generate all the sources into place. And this code is effect effectively bound directly to the Codename 1 plugin and makes it really, really simple to just write um, your app as usual. Now, we're going to build a lot from this point onwards, but I hope this gave you a sort of a sense of what uh, what we're trying to accomplish with the new Codename 1 designer and uh, please ask questions in the comment and uh, comment section and uh, communicate with us how do you think this works or doesn't work and I hope that by 3.2 it will be more stable than it is right now so thanks for watching